So over the years, the Google Pixel phones have been met with mixed reviews, but I've got to say after using the uh, Pixel 6a for just about a week now, there's a lot to like about this phone. But these days, budget to mid-range phones are only getting better, and the question is, does the Pixel 6a bring enough to the table? Well, let's find out. As always, I will leave all the purchase links down in the description. By the way, I will be giving away this brand new pair of Google Pixel Buds A series. And if you want a chance to win, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and comment your favorite feature of the Google Pixel 6a. Then follow me on Instagram, where I will announce the winners at the end of this month. All right, so in terms of price, the Pixel 6a comes in at $400, $49 and this places it firmly as a mid-range phone and then in terms of colors uh, we get three options including this really nice uh, charcoal that I have here which features this two-tone gray design you can see we have the uh, lighter elements on the top and then this darker gray going along the bottom I think it looks quite good but I would have loved to see just a pure black model too and then in terms of storage, we just get one option, which is 128 gigabytes. And while I do think this will be enough for most people, if you do have larger libraries of say uh, media, such as photos or music, I do suggest getting some extra storage via Google Photos or Google Drive. And then looking more closely at the design, you can see that the Pixel 6a is really the smaller brother to the Pixel 6, retaining much of that similar design, uh, both in terms of having that two-tone color on the back, as well as that really big uh, vertical camera module. Now, this particular camera module on the 6a doesn't stick out as much, so it looks a little bit better. Uh, and because it does stretch all the way across the phone, you don't get any wobble when placing the phone down on the table and typing. And then on the front, we have Gorilla Glass 3, which is not gonna be as scratch or crack resistant as the newer Gorilla Glass Victus. So that is all the more reason to definitely put a screen protector on your screen from day one. Even though so far I haven't had any scratches yet, I know it's only a matter of time. And then looking at the back of the phone, uh, in my unboxing, I actually first thought this was glass, and that's because it looks and really feels great in the hand, uh, but under closer inspection, I actually found out that this is plastic. So this does unfortunately mean that there is no wireless charging on the 6A, uh, but still feels good in the hand. Going along the sides of the 6A, we have this nice finished matte aluminum rail, uh, which should hold up quite well and gives the phone a really sturdy feel in the hand. Uh, although one thing that was a little bit disappointing to me is that the buttons are actually plastic. Now, while they are clicky and quite reachable, I would have loved for these to be metal as especially uh, because this is something that you do interact with often and you do feel that it is plastic. Actually, on the subject of the buttons, I would have loved it if the side button were just a little bit bigger. And then in terms of ports, or should I say port, uh, we no longer get that headphone jack and only have a USB-C port unlike the previous Pixel A series. But overall, I've got to say I'm quite happy with the build quality and the feel in the hand of the Pixel 6a. It feels good and comfortable. Uh, the metal frame as well as the glass on the front both feel quite premium. Again, I would have loved to see metal buttons, but all in all, it feels like a very sturdy phone with no flex or bending in the hand. Looking more closely at the display on the front, you can see we have this 6.1 inch OLED panel uh, that on first impressions looks really great and after using it for a week is a joy to use. I think 6.1 inches is really the perfect screen size uh, comparable to the iPhone 13 as well as the Galaxy S22. Still usable in one hand, uh, but then still big enough to also comfortably watch movies and videos. Now, this is a 60 hertz display. Uh, overall, I would say this is not an issue and generally fine to use unless you are coming from a higher 90 or 120 hertz display, 60 hertz will be just fine. Additionally, the display has a really high pixel per inch count, meaning it is very sharp and finer text is easy to read. Looking at the display from the front, I would say colors are vibrant uh, and look really good. However, when you angle it from side to side, you definitely get some color shift and some strange uh, rainbow effect that doesn't look so good. So when you use the phone, definitely look at it head on. 
I would say the display can get bright enough, but in sunnier or outdoor conditions, I wish it would just be a little bit brighter, say around 10 or 15% more to make your phone that much more clear uh, to see and to read the text. Now, I understand why Google may be limiting this to save battery. Uh, don't worry, we'll get onto battery life in a sec. Uh, but in this case, usability is super important and I wish it was just a bit brighter. To unlock the phone, the 6a features an underscreen fingerprint reader, which I would say is mostly reliable uh, and works quite well, though it is definitely on the slightly slower side. The Touch ID on the iPhone SE is significantly faster. I do really like how the uh, front-facing camera is just a pinhole camera, so this is minimally obtrusive to your content, and the reasonably thin bezels going around the display look quite good and modern, uh, more so than the iPhone SE, for example. Though I do wish that the bezels around the display were symmetrical. I think that would make it just look a little bit better. The Pixel 6a shares the same flagship processor from the Pixel 6 and also uses uh, the Pixel Launcher, which is basically stock Android. Now, I have heard some complaints uh, about the performance. However, for me, I would say the phone has been very smooth with minimal lag and glitches. Refresh rate aside, I would say the 6a is no less smooth than the Galaxy S22. True story. Speaking of refresh rates, I would say that 60 Hertz is generally fine. However, it is worth noting that some other phones in this price range, uh, such as the Nothing Phone and the uh, Samsung A53, do offer 120 hertz. But what you will only find on a Pixel phone and also the Pixel 6a is stock Android, which is Android in its purest form, uh, also with no bloatware, thankfully. You also get cool features uh, such as Material U, which will adapt the entire phone's operating system to match the colors of your wallpaper. This really adds a new level of personalization to your phone. The 6a also offers really best-in-class dictation, and as someone who likes to verbally uh, dictate notes, this has been really useful. Overall, I would say the Pixel 6a offers a clean and easy to use experience. Though one thing that is getting to me uh, is the app icons for the Google apps. They really need to do something to differentiate them as they're all starting to look identical. So the Pixel 6a has six gigabytes of RAM compared to eight gigabytes on the Pixel 6. Uh, and though this is a slight step down, I have found the six gigabytes to work just fine. Apps stay open reasonably long in the background, uh, as well as switching between apps is quite smooth. Even playing a game or two with ease without getting overly warm either. The Pixel 6a is also 5G capable uh, for those that care, not me but it does have dual speakers. So we have the earpiece speaker on the top, as well as a downwards facing speaker on the bottom. Now I would say the speakers definitely get plenty loud, so it will suffice for calls, uh, but there's not much depth or range. So these aren't really meant to be used for music. A small thing uh, that I really noticed on the Pixel 6a compared to other Android phones that I've used, especially as an Android user, uh, is the quality of the haptic feedback. Now, this is built in throughout the operating system as swiping between menus or uh, getting submenus, but of course also with notifications that come in. And I think this is something that commonly gets overlooked, especially on the Android side. Uh, so it is refreshing to see really sharp and tight haptic feedback on the Pixel 6a. All right, let's talk about the camera system on the back. Now we have a dual camera system. So we have a wide as well as an ultra wide lens. And in the camera app, it is technically possible to zoom into a 2x zoom. However, this doesn't actually act as a true telephoto since it doesn't have an additional lens uh, and instead just uses digital zoom to crop in. Pixels are known for doing a lot with their camera hardware by adding AI enhancement. I would say the look of a pixel photo, especially from the 6a, uh, is more neutral, a little bit less saturated, uh, but still high in dynamic range and contrast. And I really like this look. In fact, I would say I prefer it over the more saturated look that you get on Samsung's phones. With the Pixel 6a, you also get some pretty cool uh, intelligent camera features, such as Magic Eraser, which will easily uh, allow you to instantly remove any unwanted objects from photos, and this actually works quite well. You also get night photography. Now, I wouldn't say it is as good as, say, a uh, flagship such as the S22 or the iPhone 13, uh, but at its price, it is really quite good, and much better compared to, say, the iPhone SE, which has no night mode whatsoever. And then 
than video, though not its biggest strength, uh, has good autofocus and stabilization, but lacks the smoothness in terms of adjusting exposure uh, and motion compared to the iPhone SE. And finally, on the front, we have an 8 megapixel selfie camera, which is nice and detailed, has good dynamic range, though a little bit too much smoothing on the face. All of this is to say that I can say with confidence uh, that the camera system on the Pixel 6a is amongst, if not the best at its price range. I would place the iPhone SE as second best, but this still lacks features such as night mode uh, and those intelligent camera features that only the 6a offers. Let's talk about the battery. Now the Pixel 6a offers a 4400 milliamp hour battery, which is relatively big for its size. Now Google claims you can get 24 hours of battery life with adaptive battery, uh, which will adapt to how you use your phone over time. In my experience, the battery life on the 6a has been good, but definitely not 24 hours. I found myself getting just around that seven hour of screen on time mark, uh, which to be fair is above average compared to, for example, the iPhone SE's five to six hours. Now, one drawback with the 6a uh, is first that it doesn't have that wireless charging that I mentioned before, but also that it can only charge up to 18 watts in terms of fast charging. Now, I wouldn't call this slow, uh, but it is a little bit on the lower end compared to other similarly priced phones. So at the end of the day, who is the Pixel 6a for? Honestly, after using the phone, I was really quite impressed. It ticks all the right boxes, featuring a high quality design that looks modern and feels good in the hand. The display, though not its biggest strength, is still solid with good color reproduction and being sharp. You also get pretty good battery life and what I can describe as the best in class camera system at this price. You also get three years of promised software updates and five years of security updates. For $449, I can definitely recommend the Pixel 6a as a great all around wallet friendly Android phone. Let me know if you have any questions. As always, I will leave the purchase links down below. If you haven't seen them yet, I highly recommend watching my iPhone SE review, as well as my Pixel 6a unboxing and initial impressions video. Thanks again for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.